Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers. I, I, of course, I've seen that song when I'm not just a skeleton, just a pumpkin. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to the 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, this day and day... Today is day 16, I believe, and day 17 are going to both be late, or are both late. Um, how to take a break because of mental health and somewhat of physical health. Um, but yeah, so I'm back. Yeah, I did a pumpkin. I put the uh, these pants on because I thought that was kind of similar to the color of white pumpkins. I was like, hey, that works. Brown, brown fits in the aesthetic. My sideburns are coming back in. I, I have this weird thing where I don't grow hair right here. I don't know. It just doesn't grow here. It grows here. Grows here. Grows here. Definitely grows here. My sideburns are like the things that grow in the most. Not here. <laughs> uh, no goatees for me. Oh, yeah. Grows here, grows here, grows, you know, everywhere but right here. I guess maybe right here. I don't know. Hey, so editing me realizing I forgot to leave um, a little promo here, ad. So, and that's why I'm dressed differently. So, if you like goth fashion and you want to get a deal on some good stuff, unfortunately, a lot of it's expensive, go ahead and check out the two stores below in my description. We've got Gintix and Vampio. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the heck out of those. Just use the code ROYALFAY40 for Gintix for 40% off your purchase and ROYALFAY50 Vampio to get 50% um, off. If it takes your fancy, go ahead and give it a look. I'd appreciate it. They'd appreciate it. We'd all appreciate it. <laughs> I'm a dork. <laughs> Today, I'm going to continue wash. Continue wash. Continue off of nightmares and dreams. Um, I thought that would be, uh, it'd be a good time to start continuing that. Start continuing that. To continue that. I believe that I had made mention of the story idea Dear Dream Diary at some point last time. So basically the concept of Dear Dream Diary was, um, or originally it was called Dear Dream Journal because I was opposed to anything called Diary because that was a feminine and girly sounding. But um, Dear Dream Diary is just so alliterative, it's like D D D triple D's. But no, um, so the story concept is this person's having a bunch of nightmares and these nightmares kind of start becoming, blending more into reality, they start being haunted through their dreams and then the dreams start, you know, the, the, the ghost starts showing up in real life, things like that, people around them start having nightmares about them, you know, it's just like, um, basically being haunted through their dreams and it just kind of gets worse and worse and worse. And I was having a lot of nightmares at the time. I was going stir crazy. I had been stuck in the house. It was summer vacation. I was very young and very young. I was like between high school and grade school ages, I want to say. And I was like at the youngest I was middle school. Um, and I'm like not leaving the house very much for like two months straight or so. So I start having a lot of nightmares um, and going a little stir crazy. And I get this idea for this, this story, this book. And um, the more I write, the more nightmares I start having. So, but it may make sense. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Sorry, I thought I was not recording for a second there. But it makes sense because I'm thinking about it, and so of course it's going to happen more frequently. Okay. Then suddenly one day, my girlfriend at the time, she. She texted me one morning saying how she had a nightmare about me, where she was trying to protect me and stuff like that. And it was just like the more I was writing this, the more dreams happening and the more this. And just that was like kind of what put a straw on it where I was like, okay, no, I can't work on this. The, this concept needs to be shelved. This concept can't, I, I can't deal with this right now. Because um, I was getting more and more scared. Like I was getting more panicked. And at the time I was living in the house I believed was haunted. Um, so I just kind of like, mm mm, bye. Nope, guy. G -g -g -g. No, no, no. Mm mm. <laughs> and, um, I ended up getting the idea, like, oh my gosh, what this is based off a person who, what this story is, someone who's 
writing this story because it's based off their own experience and then it starts happening and it's like okay now you're making it way too much real for yourself stop okay so now to actually talk about my dreams instead of just that you know paranoia fit so i'll talk to you guys about the fuck you dream <laughs> That's what I call it now. Apparently that's what I've labeled it as. So one time, um, I had been living in the house for a good while, so I kind of knew the layout very well. And I'm just, I'm hanging out in my room. So, in this dream, I'm in my bedroom and I'm working at my desk. And I'm just, I don't remember what I was doing. I was got my computer, I was writing, drawing, something, you know. And I suddenly hear this very deep, like, masculine voice go, Fuck you! Like, right behind me. Like, not even right, right behind me, but behind me in my room. So, I turn back to see who's there. And all I see is just my cat. She's just staring up at me, like... I'm like, okay. Weird, but okay. So, I turn back and start doing exactly what I was doing. You know, I'm just like, Maybe it's just a trick of my mind or something. And suddenly there it is again. Fuck you! I turn around, just my cat, and I just like, okay, I have a really bad feeling. There's this really intense bad feeling about my room. So I get up and I leave. And I turn off my light, close the door. I'm like, okay, I need to step away from this room. There's something wrong here. And I go to the living room and I tell one of my sisters we we'll call her Cat and I, I believe I told my mother too about the voice and because we, we all are believers here in this house about that so I, I told my, my sister though um, and we all sit out in the living room because uh, the living room is literally right outside my room like there's this big old couch well it's right outside my room big old couch the TV and we're all watching movies together, and eventually people start falling asleep while watching things, and I'm still awake. Um, like my sister fell asleep on top of my dad's chest, and my mom's sleeping on the other side. And and I decide, you know, maybe maybe it's a good time to check out my room now. Maybe it's, maybe that presence is gone. Like it's probably been enough time to simmer down. So I get up and I go over to my room. You know, open the door. Actually, the door might have stayed open. I can't recall. I, I usually, I think, close my door because my cat didn't like it when the door was open. So I open the door and I turn on the light. And there's still this disgusting feeling. There's this oozy feeling. And the moment I turn out the light and just like, just like that, it shuts back off. But that's not the only thing that happens. It's almost like something sprayed over my face and my mouth and my eyes are like glued shut i can't see and i can't scream because my mouth is shut by something i can't see and so are my eyes luckily i had a really good understanding of the area around my room and the area the living room area and stuff like that because i'd lived there long enough so i luckily didn't i think i've mentioned in the previous um video at the time the staircase was directly by my my room so it's a good thing that you know i had a good enough understanding that i wouldn't have fallen down the stairs so i ended up you know turning around and wandering my way back to the living room and i'm panicked obviously but i'm trying to keep calm trying to pry my mouth open my eyes open and the farther i get from the room the more easily it is for me to be able to do that and i'm finally able to like you know, at least get it open, finally starting to be able to make some noise and starting 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 to get my eyes open and stuff like that. And um and I was trying to scream but I couldn't. Um and, and I, I eventually was able to open my mouth and when I did though I still couldn't make any noise. And I ended up crawling. Ended up happening. It's like I thought it was safer instead of walking to crawl over to where they were. And the farther I like I said, the farther I got the more I was able to see and speak. And I tried waking up my sister, um, but she wasn't waking up. But um, because I was like so frantic, my, my mother ends up waking up and and she was on the other side of the couch. And so I crawled over to her and I kind of told her everything that happened. 
And that's where I woke up from the dream. Just tell my mom so you remember how like my room was being like creepy and possessed and stuff yeah well it got worse <laughs> um i i had some other dreams that i kind of wrote down to talk about but like honestly i don't know how well i can remember all of these there was one called daddy's little girl not about me um not at all about me like, a lot of times i have dreams like it's, it's actually kind of rare sometimes where i have dreams from my own perspective um, and I say that in most of my nightmares, have it from my own perspective, but Daddy's Little Girl, if anything, I think it was about one of my other sisters, because the girl in it did remind me a lot of her. Um, and there's always this thing about, like, the two middle sisters being Daddy's girls, um, or Dad, my dad's favorites and stuff. But yeah, so, um, I can't remember most of the details, I couldn't find my old journal entry for it, but I remember there was, like, this murder thing or a kidnapping thing or something i remember the parents of this girl like being tied tied up in like caution tape and i say girl she's like a teenager young adult maybe and her parents were like tied up in like caution tape or something and they're bloody and something's happening and then there was this shirt this red this white shirt that got painted in with blood they painted like these suspenders, like seven like suspenders, obviously real suspenders that are painted on the shirt, with like little hearts on the bottom, with blood, and it says daddy's little girl on it. Um, and, and, I don't really remember much more to that. At one point, the girl is now like in the future, she's, she's joining, like, she's like in a rock band or something now, or pop star, she's, she's, she's in a band, and she goes to revisit the shirt kind of thing, and... Like she, she, I remember her going through hallways and finding the box with the shirts in and opening it and and there's a shirt. I think she put it on and was like doing a photo shoot in it or something like that, which is really kind of fucked up, seeing as how it literally is painted in with blood. <laughs> um, I don't really need to repeat any of the little uh, my scary ghost girl stories or my lovely ghost girl. Sorry, don't get upset with me. You're lovely, not scary. Um. <laughs> I don't think I really need to repeat any of her stories, um, but she definitely was a part of the Dream Journal, um, Dream Diary collection, um, and like I said, I stopped that back before she came back again, and I was like, hey, welcome back. I wasn't quite, it was spooked, but not quite scared by the last dream I had about her, and if you're wondering what, which one that is, um, yeah. no, it's, it's day two, in fact, so pretty early in. So... Uh, this one, this this nightmare is not part of the dream, dream, Dear Dream Diary, but it is a disturbing dream I had more recently, like back in, back in the beginning of this month, year, that meant year, in fact in March, shortly after COVID started actually, or shortly after COVID got real in the USA, that is, haha, <laughs> um, and I have it written down, like I, I was immediately telling like my friends stuff about it. And here's the thing about me, I don't usually just have like one dream. I usually wake up a lot. I have sleep apnea, so I fall asleep and wake up a lot. Obviously, I should be wearing sleep apnea. Actually, everyone technically stops breathing in their sleep and wakes up constantly throughout their sleep. Just people sleep apnea do it a lot more and have a higher chance of remembering waking up way more because, you know, we're literally suffocating twice as much or more than normal people. One of them was living through someone's eyes. One of the memories involved me being on a mattress floating in the water. I believe I, or she, the person I was living the memories through, and for some reason, I want to say was Heidi. For context, Heidi is a character of mine from My Joker. Interestingly enough, I do voice. <clears throat> Just had a miscarriage, so the mattress was dirty and bloody. For some reason, the water was internal, like in something that looked like a sewer or tunnels. The mattress ended up floating toward a high waterfall in this place, and I had to remind myself not to panic, because this wasn't really going to affect me. They were just memories. I remember shutting my eyes as I reached the drop, because real or not, I was feeling everything she felt. I almost felt like I clenched onto my miscarried fetus whilst this happened, feeling my body lifted from the mattress as I fell down the waterfall. I still landed on the mattress as we finished the drop, but it was such an uneasy feeling. 
I remember the tunnels were all brownish, yellowish, orangish, and brick concrete like material. I have very oddly detailed and vivid dreams. Dear gods, though, I felt the drop. Like, you know, the feeling you have in your gut when you're on a roller coaster or a drop ride. But here's the thing. I had no straps or assurance that I was going to land back on the mattress safely in any capacity. I was floating in the air above the mattress for part of the moment. Yeah, normally, that, um, for part of the moment. And then my friend commented, like, usually you'd wake up during that. I said, yeah, normally that would be the body's natural response. Though apparently I did sleep very heavily that night. In fact, one of my partners had tried waking me up. She was poking me, talking to me, even apparently laid on top of me. And I, and I, just for context, she's like six foot three, and I'm a foot, more than a foot shorter than her. And she laid on me, and I did not respond in any regards. I slept so heavy. And, and I can't even remember any of that. And I sleep talk too, so apparently I did not respond. So apparently I did respond a few times when she tried to talk to me. When she tried waking me up. It was just, I, was, I, I do remember having this dream and how intense that felt. It was just like, I literally was on this mattress floating in this like sewer under uh, underground tunnel. Or something. I don't even know if it's actually underground. I have no proof of that. Um, I just remember it was like in this tunnel-like thing, kind of sewer-esque. I think the water did definitely look disgusting. And I had a miscarriage, which, you know, I can't have a miscarriage. I can't even get pregnant. But, um... And, and so, it was just so interesting, and just, like, that feeling of the drop was kind of, like, terrifying. And I didn't wake up, because usually... You see your, your body's response to having that drop in a dream is to wake up, and I didn't. I still stayed on the mattress floating along with my little fetus. I'm not sure if it was a fetus. It was probably like an embryo or something. I don't know. I, I, I Like I said, I felt like I clenched it. I don't actually remember fully clenching it and stuff. I'm known for having very vivid and detailed dreams. I've had a few where I had a zombie, and, and sometimes time passed throughout them. I had this one dream of a zombie apocalypse, and I holed up in my house for like weeks or so, and eventually like, some other people tried like getting in because they wanted shelter and stuff, but it's just like, it's amazing to me sometimes just how vivid and detailed my dreams can be and how long they can last. Oh gosh, the Junji Ito everlasting dream or... Whatever it's called is now like playing in my head. Well, um, I think that's all I have for you today. Well, thank you oh, for today's late episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you all are practicing so safe social distancing, and that you all have a gay day. <laughs>